Good evening, everybody. I promise I'm not going to waste your time. Um, we've had a lot of um, talks this evening, and I think yeah, you listening briefly to all um, of the speakers, and I must confess that they've laid the foundation for whatever I wanted to share with, with us this evening. So um, let me cut straight to the chase. Um, I know you must be wondering why I had to come up with this, right? Yeah, so it's very important because um, First and foremost, you are the center for memories. And secondly, if I must do justice to this um, subject of the conversation, this would help us go a long way. Basically, this is called Ikenga uh, in the Igbo traditional setting, right? Ikenga symbolizes a lot of things. One, it symbolizes um, achievement, right? Yeah, so in this Ikenga, there are three major components a person's chi, the person's ancestors, ndiche, and the power. Ikenga simply means ikenjiaga. So I don't know if you are conversant with the arrow of God, Chino Achebe's most celebrated novel, right? If you look at the confrontation between Akokalia and Ebo, it gives you an understanding of how the traditional Igbo setting worked, right? So um, Ebo... Went to, uh, went to settle a case um, in Akukalia's house. And he's all tempered, right? So Akukalia wasn't listening to him. And they carried Akukalia's Ikenga and smashed it on the ground. And Akukalia, out of anger, devastated by that particular incident, took his ding gun and shot Ebo dead, right? In the traditional Igbo setting, this is alo, abomination. Ordinarily, the person would have been excommunicated from the um, village. But what did the elders do? They didn't do any of those things because Abel smashing Akukalia's Ikenga, one, is an insult to his person and to whatever he represents. Wealth acquisition is a primary facet of the Igbo society, and it represents two things. One, efforts and values. The Igbo people are well known for their end of endeavor, industry, you know, bringing together the world we celebrate today, Bambo, the subject of our conversation, right? So for us at the Center for Memories, we are non-profit. Uh, we have a different way of a Bambo because our job is to document these stories that I shared with you, document Igbo history, document Igbo culture, right? And we have to find new ways of doing all of that. I mean, when you hear documentation, you, you'll be imagining large files, you know, being stored in offices. I mean, yesterday we just bought a new cloud and, and space, you know, because most of our physical spaces are, are filled to the brim, right? We have a lot of stories that many of us here may not have heard, right? So we have to look for other sources that will preserve this story much more than the hard disk, hard drives, you know, that, that may actually cl um, crash tomorrow. You know, so there are different ways we tell the story. When you come into the center, you see the mirrors, right? Yeah, I, I know you may be wondering what uh, all of this, what do they represent? They are filled with stories, and that particular type of storytelling is majorly for children because their minds wander a lot when you tell them stories. You know, we produce a lot of documentaries, you know, for adults and for children. We, are pu we publish books as well, right? So recently, we had a, a collaboration with many... Sun City, um, Afia TV, we're producing a lot of um, podcasts. So we're into podcasting because what's the essence of documenting a story? If nobody will hear it. Nobody will listen to it. And these stories are very important because I came out with this for one singular purpose. Not because I, I'm so proud of the Kenga. Yeah, I'm so proud of the Kenga, actually. But again, because Igbo people are quite symbolic. If you look around you, if you're Igbo, Everything we do as Igbo people, there's always a symbol representing it. Most times people think, ah, these people are got now got more or an effort. No, because we believe in inyanyafor, right? Because people ask, why, why do we use the right hand and not the left hand? This is why. You're a king. The right hand is represents person's um, um, hand of action. You know, because most times people use this one. Warriors use this one. Farmers use this one, you know. Everybody who, you know, does something that is worthwhile, you know, in the traditional society. 
Now we are no longer in the traditional society. We, we, we have left the era of hard work to the era of mind work, right? Because your mind has to work, you know, no longer physicality or masculinity, yeah? The thinking, the strategy, you know, of processing. Can I mention? These ones, whether you are in the era of industry or in the era of mind, 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 mindfulness, you always have to find ways to put it in into what you do. So coming back to what we do at the center, how do we make the change? We have to look at one culture from where we come from. Every human, every human being has a culture. It is one thing that, are, that ties all of us together. Whether you are Caucasian, whether you are black, you know, whatever race you come from, you have a culture. And that singular tie for all of us helps us to, you know, reach out to every, every other person, wherever they may be. We've had situations where people who actually, the one that shocked me the most was when someone from India came, right, right to the center. Because there's a particular story that they found on our space, and they felt that that story resonates with their culture. We thought about um, Uriopa. You, you know the Uriopa uh, masquerade. And this person said they have this Nashikupit or something, I don't know. It's similar to the Uriopa. And he wants to find out whether this Nashikupit or something originated from our Uriopa. And the stories are so similar. The stories are so similar. If you're not Igbo or if you're not Indian, if they tell this story, you may think it's one and the same. Right? So I'm, I'm sharing this because, I mean, when you share your story, you open up access to a lot of things. You open up access to people who may not really know about your existence. You open up access to a lot of people who may not know the commonalities that exist you know, among humanities, right? And maybe this slide that went off is the sign that I should stop talking and then exit the stage, you know? So, um, because I'm actually the one that is going to turn on the generator. So, so, <laughs> so, so I, I think I, I, I should wrap it up. Eh? Okay. So, but, but let me wrap it up. Why can I um, 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 box? What we do presently, you know, to upscale or to, you know, change the tide from what happened in a traditional story is the art of storytelling, the way we tell it. In the traditional, story, um, traditional era, storytelling is merely tales by moonlight where everybody gathers, community shares values and morals through the stories that they tell. But nowadays, we lean on this. We call it object-based method, right? Because people are actually moved by what they see than what they hear. So when I share the story of Ikenga, my interest is to arouse your curiosity, to understand what you may need to take away from this story and how you may need to integrate it into your own life. And this works effectively for us. The object-based learning method works effectively for us because people have you know, come to a point where they do not literally see the things that exist as mere objects, but the values and the messages that they possess. You know? Yeah, even in our works, you know, Nkatu Mibe, we find, you know, most people who may listen to me now may not even understand that we you know, actually integrate this strategy in that particular um, 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 program. You know, so object-based learning is one key thing for us you know, because it actually sparks your curiosity, increases your learning, and makes you want to be interested in, in the stories that we tell. And at this point, I think it's very important that I, I just close my mouth and then wait for the questions. I know I see a lot of, you know, I see a lot of looks on your faces, and I know it means questions, and I'm willing to take them. Thank you so much for um, paying attention.